Um, making a video today. Uh, got a couple questions um, sent to me by a few people asking uh, about wiring repair. That's one of the things I do the most is uh, damaged wiring harnesses on, um, you know, wrecked cars or um, we see a lot of rat damage. Uh, and a few people have emailed me and asked me if you can repair airbag wiring um, and what's the best way to do it. So I thought maybe I'd take a few minutes and um, make a video. And I was just going to go through and uh, kind of show you the different connectors, different options, and the different ways to do it. Uh, one of the ways um, to repair wiring for cars would be your basic... Um, crimp connector but this is actually a heat shrink connector um, so that's one way to do it and then another way would be to uh, solder and heat shrink it when I use uh, heat shrink I always use three to one um, with adhesive inside and then we have your just everyday uh, butt connector no heat shrink just regular butt connector and then uh, quite a few years back I found uh, the ultimate way to repair wires. Um, I happened to stumble upon it. I don't know if you've ever seen these or not, but these are called um, <clears throat> solder seals. And um, the question about repairing airbag wiring is I don't know the answer. It basically depends on each manufacturer. I do it every day. I've been to, you know, iCar classes, plenty of classes that say, yes, you can repair it. Um, Infinity, that's actually how I stumbled onto the solder, solder seal connectors, is I had ordered a pigtail from Infinity, and when it came in, it actually came with the solder seal connectors, and that's pretty much all I use anymore. They're expensive, um, but they're the best, so I thought maybe I would just make a quick video and kind of show you each, you know, approach to fixing a wire wiring in a car um but you can check with each manufacturer you know i know most of them do sell um the pigtails and yes it's okay uh, as long as you do a proper repair you do it right um i've actually tried just to play around before um when i was bored and i tried uh, with my oscilloscope and uh, a function generator and then i have um all kinds of you know lcr meters and um many different uh, multimeters and I've actually repaired like large lengths of wires and um, short lengths of wires and just just to see if there was any kind of resistance change and I've actually tried to uh, use a signal generator and see if I could pick up any noise because <clears throat> I know you know some of the park assist systems and some of the ABS systems you know they're they're all um, some of them come with shielded wires and uh, um, whatnot so I just tried the various different um, methods and honestly I, I never could personally find any difference in any of the connectors um, resistance wise you know even on long strands uh, what I have here is I cut a bunch of this is actually um, BMW wires out of a harness I replaced in a BMW so it's all the exact same uh, kind of wire but I've never seen a difference I guess uh, it would just be the quality of repair and how you decide to do it but I'll kind of show you how I like to do it. Um, I love the solder seals, and if I don't use the solder seals, um, I'll just solder and heat shrink it with three to one. And if it's something like uh, just a headlight or a fog light or you know a washer bottle in the front get damaged a lot, tail light wires, it's perfectly fine um, to use the heat shrink uh, butt connectors. I try to stay away from the regular butt connectors altogether. Um, the reason why I prefer actually solder and heat shrinking it or using the solder seals is is say there's about six or seven wires you don't even have to stagger them after using uh, you know one of these two methods the wires uh, diameter is barely over what it was original so you can do a repair and actually you know uh, put the uh, factory wrapping back on it and it's almost impossible to tell and it's gonna last long term because both of these these two here have adhesive in them uh, the heat shrink butt connector doesn't but the solder seal and you know, of course, solder and heat shrinking the wires. Um, yeah, it seals off the wire too, so it's it's protected from the weather. You know, any kind of noise or anything. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, just do a couple of repairs. I'm going to cut each one. Okay, so um, I know this video is probably 
more for beginners, but I've actually had a few people ask me, you know, about wiring repair, how I do it personally, and, you know, if someone asks for it, I'll take a few minutes and make a video, but the first two are going to be very similar. You know, this is your regular butt connector. Um, I don't really use these at all, um, unless I'm out and I absolutely have to. Um, and then it's the same concept, you know, as your heat shrink one. But main thing I would say is just don't strip your wire back too far. Um, I see people strip them back a half an inch. And after you do the connection, you've got copper hanging out the ends. And that's not what you want. You really don't need much um, copper. So I'm going to just do the heat shrink one, kind of show you how that works. Uh, just put the wire in. Uh, see if I can zoom in. And the copper should stop. And you don't want it to go past halfway in the connector. Because if it goes out the other side, you won't be able to put your other wire in so you want the length to be about a quarter of an inch on this connector and the main thing is to have a good pair of uh, crimpers I think they call them stake ons um, these ones here I got at Home Depot for 20 bucks and they're my favorite I have some name brand tool truck ones and I use these before anything else I mean they hardly take any force to crimp they got really nice uh, rubber handles and they're heavy um, and ever since I just picked these up, I happen to see them and they look like a decent pair. I, I haven't used any of my, uh, you know, $70, $80 ones since. Um, but basically, yeah, just make sure uh, some of these connectors have an actual cut in them. They're not a solid tube if you were to look down the end. If you do see that it's cut, um, you want to crimp the opposite side of that because uh, it'll keep it from coming apart and it'll actually crimp right. So just put your wire in. And when you crimp these correctly, it's almost impossible to pull them apart. You'll more than likely rip the wire before you rip the wire out of the connector. I mean, they're, they hold extremely well. So, uh, usually I'll use a hot air gun um, or I have a little torch with a deflector. But for the video where I'm sitting at my desk right now, I'm just going to heat this up and just kind of show you with real quick with a lighter. I'll probably burn the connector, but... Um, the only thing I don't like about these, I mean, they're great. They heat shrink. Um, they seal up the wire. But European cars tend to have smaller wiring. Um, I turned this one black, of course, using a lighter. But you can see it actually shrunk to the size of the wire. And uh, maybe this one does have adhesive in it. It looks like it does. And it sealed off the connection. So not a bad way to do it um, for something that's basically just current driven. You know, nothing with a, a pulse signal or anything. Um, good way to fix fog lights, headlights, uh, washer bottles, uh, turn signals, stuff like that. Um, tail lights, not bad. Uh, of course, you know, find a better way to shrink it when you're done. Uh, try not to use a lighter because you will burn it. But yeah, these are pretty good. Um, and inexpensive. I think I got, uh, I buy them on Amazon when I get them and I get, it was like a couple dollars for a hundred. Um, but yeah, that's all there is for that one. Uh, the next step I'll show you actually is how to properly solder a wire. And then I'll show you how the solder seal wire connectors work. So, uh, let me get this switched out and I'll be right back. Okay. So next we're going to, um, solder and heat shrink some wires. Uh, I hope this is in focus. Um, way back when I first started learning this in, uh, 1992, um, uh, one of the teachers at the automotive shop that uh, I went to school at um, called this the Western Union Splice. I don't know if that's what it's called, but it's always stuck with me. Um, basically, you want to strip the wires pretty long, and then you're going to uh, make an X out of them, and then twist them together. So they kind of interlock. And it also keeps the wire, uh, prior to soldering it, you can see I just interlocked them so I really can't pull them apart right now. Um, and once you solder them, it, it just makes it for a better connection is what I was told. And I've done it like that for uh, quite a few years now. And uh, I'm going to set this right on top of here. And I'll show you the right way to actually solder them. I know this is probably a boring video. This is not what I usually do, but you ask for it, uh, you get it. Um, and solder. I've tried every kind known to man. And what I like to use personally, myself, is I use 
6337 leaded solder um, and uh, 6040 unleaded but uh, the smaller diameter seems to work uh, better for doing automotive wires sorry I should have had this ready before I started the video this right here is um, 0 0.4 millimeter and what I have right here in my hand is 0 0.8 but basically what you're gonna want to do let me make sure my soldering irons on here is actually hold the soldering iron on the back side of the wire not where you solder you want the wire to be hot you want it to get up to temperature still not there yet okay we're starting to get there and then you basically want the solder to melt on the wire not on the tip of your soldering iron when you're doing automotive wiring so just like that let me see if I can get a little bit better light here you can see it's silver won't come apart soldered all the way around and that's how you want it to look and then what I do is a uh, uh, probably should have told you this beforehand make sure you put the heat shrink on first I don't know how many times I've soldered wires together and forgot the heat shrink and then you got to cut them apart start over but this here is the three to one <clears throat> heat shrink uh, it's my favorite stuff and it has adhesive built in you can get this fairly cheap on Amazon as well but this will shrink down seal off the wire and we should see some adhesive come out the end on this one too again I know a lighter is not the right way to do it but it's what I have on me right now and I don't feel like walking out to the van so that's it heat shrunk also the three to one uh, heat shrink is way thicker you can actually feel the adhesive coming out of the end so this is sealed up pretty good but it's actually way thicker uh, in the past I've used some of the cheap um, heat shrink and when you run your fingers along you could actually feel the copper coming out that does not happen with a three to one shrink ratio um, heat shrink so that's all there is to it there that's a nice um, watertight sealed connection <clears throat> soldered really good and uh, we got one more left I'm gonna get it set up and I'll just show you my new favorite what I've been using for the past few years uh, it'll get you out on a, a the job really quick using the next uh, solder seal connectors and I know for a fact that they're approved for Nissan and Infinity for OEM repairs of airbag and uh, ABS uh, harness connectors so let me uh, grab that connector and we'll be right back Okay, so the last one's going to be uh, my favorite uh, or my choice, you know, uh, when I do repairs. This is how I always do them is with the solder shrink connectors. Um, for this one, I went and grabbed my small, out of my van, my small, um, I think it's a, a UE 8586. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, little rework stations. Uh, got the hot air gun, soldering iron, all in one. Fits in my van, nice. Um, Anyways, so yeah, this one's going to be very similar to the last one we did. Uh, strip it back farther, and then you're going to slide the connector all the way through. Grab your other wire, and we're going to do the same thing. What he used, or what I was told was the Western Union splice. I don't know what you would really call it, but it stuck with me all these years. I'm not going to change it now. So we got them interlaced. Then you're going to slide this back on until the solder strip let me see if you can see it is directly centered between the two wires like so and for this one so I can actually show you what it does I'm just gonna grab the hot air gun uh, I don't have the deflector on it but it's gonna take a little bit longer but you'll get the idea and I don't want to burn this one so you can actually see but the center ring is gonna melt and you'll see the solder flow onto the wires and as soon as it gets to that point, uh, you're done.
It's a lot faster when you use a torch and a deflector, but I'm in no hurry right now. Okay, I'm gonna put the hot air gun away. Okay, and uh, trying to bring it into focus for you. But what you'll see is that little solder ring is going to melt. And it actually fuses the wires together. You'll see they turn silver and then it heat shrinks. And this, uh, it's hard to tell in the video, is barely larger than the original diameter of the wire. So if you have to stack them, it's really nice. And, and I'm literally pulling as hard as I can right now. And you cannot pull it apart. So these are by far my favorite choice for doing airbags. Um, PCM wires, uh, anything, you know, that, that may... Uh, have interference issues or um, something that you really want a nice connection and, and they should last forever um, so there you have it just a few different ways um, for the few of you that asked me on how to my opinion on how to properly repair uh, wires um, and uh, like I said earlier uh, check with each manufacturer if you're going to be doing any kind of repairs on um, airbag wiring or pigtails but I know you know BMW um, VW Honda Acura Infinity they all sell airbag connectors um, with the replacement female and male pins so um, it's pretty safe to say that if they sell the connectors you can put them on and uh, you know just good rule of thumb you know if you're still unsure uh, I always go ahead and do it anyways um, you know always use an OEM actual plug but uh and make sure that it's some kind of solder and sealed connection don't just use butt connectors and uh i know this was a boring video but i did say that if someone asked me a question or you know if i got a couple people asking me that i would just take the time out to make the video and uh, trying to stay true to my word for my channel so um thanks for watching and i uh, hope it helped you out